Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going old school. We're gonna get down and dirty and we are gonna love every minute of it. I am teaching you a technique of making your own planters called Hyper Tufa, a technique that I learned long, long, long ago in college. I'm only 28, so I don't know really why I say old, old, old. I'm just kidding. So Hyper Tufa is born from mixing together a ratio of Portland cement, peat moss, perlite, vermiculite. You let it cure. You go through this process that we're going to go over today, and then you have planters. So what am I talking about? Well, we are going to take this Dollar Tree mold, and we are going to create our own planter. Cool thing is, you can use an old box, you can use a mold, you can create it yourself. You can go on the outside and, and texturize it using bubble wrap. You can press leaves in it. It's amazing the things that you can do. And Hypertufa allows you the ability to be as creative as you wanna be. The opportunities are endless, limitless. You just have to get creative. So I am going to show you how we do this. First and foremost, let me tell you, we are gonna get dirty. As I said, we are gonna get down and dirty and love every last minute of it. So you need to make sure that you have on clothes that don't, don't matter if you get dirty. I have on a workout outfit and so I'm cool with that. Um, you also may need a mask. I'm outdoors. The concrete that we're gonna be working with is crazy dusty. And so you may want to protect your lungs. Um, because I'm recording this video, I'm, I'm not going to put one on so that you can still hear me. So let's get started. Are you ready? I'm gonna show you the material. First is perlite or vermiculite. Either one, perlite gives you a little bit rougher texture. Vermiculite, I wanted to use, but I could not find it. So this is what we're gonna go with today. Peat moss, you can buy the pre-sifted. It's a little bit more expensive but uh, we're just going to sift it ourselves you just don't want any little sticks or big chunks um, it needs to be smooth so to sift that I'm going to use a, a plastic colander and you want to have a bucket that you don't mind getting messy to mix your concoction in and a spoon which I'm gonna just use this plastic spoon. You want to have some sort of water, so I'm gonna fill this with water. Um, you want to be smart with your water, so I want to just put it in this container that I can refill. Cooking sprays, gloves, absolute necessity because you are working with Portland cement and it is a little bit rough on your hands. You can use a mask. This container is what I'm going to use as my measuring cup. Um, it's just an old, a uh, planter I got an arrangement in. And so you want to do equal ratios of your peat, of your perlite or vermiculite and your Portland cement. And scissors to open everything up. I have plastic trash bags or painter's cloth. Here's our cement. It is straight Portland cement, no mix. A sacrete, 94 pounds. It was $20 at Home Depot. It's very, very important you don't get a mix. You get straight Portland cement. It's smooth. There's no rocks mixed in with it. And so I am going to go ahead and scoop it out into my container and we'll get started making it. So listen, we're not two minutes in and I've already put a Kim spin on it. So I don't want you to make the same mistake as me. So we're gonna talk about it, full transparency. You know, this container I said I'm using as my measuring container. Well, I went right on upstairs and took my happy tail into the Portland cement and I filled it up and I was ready to go. And then I came down here and realized you have to do the other ingredients first and the cement last. And I have no way to measure it now. So that's why I'm saying don't do that. I'm gonna dump it into this bowl. Okay, are y'all ready to get started? I am so excited to see how these turn out. Okay. First things first, we are going to strain our peat moss in our colander. This is very important. You don't want to have any sticks or big hunks in there. I'm gonna sift it into this bowl beneath it so that I can measure it. And you can see there's a lot of big chunks. So you can help it swirling your hand in there was to get the very nice particles to the bottom. Look at what's left. This would not go well in your hyper tufa. So do not use this. You want to get rid of this. It's gonna go in my garden behind me. Okay, and what we're left with is this beautiful, nice, fine peat moss with no sticks in it. So we're gonna see how much I'm using my uh, measure and it's not enough. So see, it's only halfway. We're gonna do it again. That's perfect. 
whatever your measurement is, you want a one-to-one -one ratio of peat and perlite. This is dusty too. You want to then stir really, really well. You can use your hands for this. You can use a spoon. You really don't want to see them separated. It's be very, very, very well blended before you add your, your cement. That's how it looks. Love this. Okay, so we know that my cement is the right amount and I'm just going to go ahead and add this in. Okay, this is where it gets super dusty. You want to have this so well mixed. I'm not wearing gloves either. Uh, I'm just having so much fun making this video and uh, wanting to see exactly how this turns out with you that I just choose not to take any of the, do any of the things I'm telling you to do. Sorry about that. Now, if it's easier, mix it with your hands. You just want to get it very, very well mixed. You can use a cement mixer. Um, if you want to make a big batch. I don't have one of those on hand. So... My hands are going to have to do the trick. Okay, this made up a ton. Now, the one thing I want to tell you, this does save. So if you've made up more than you want to use, um, you can put it in a plastic bin with a lid on it. And it'll keep. So you have it made up when you're ready. So I'm not gonna take and pour water in this and make this whole big batch because all I'm doing is the one bowl for right now. So I'm going to actually mix it in another container, which you can do the same. This is super messy. So just remember that. All right, I think we are ready to make the hyper So this is where you need your water, you need your spoon, and whatever container you are planning on mixing it in. I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna add as much as I think. And just remember, you can always make more. So I'm gonna get a great big heaping bunch. We are ready to mix our water. The goal here, the goal here is to make mud pies, okay? When you were a kid, did you make mud pies? I did. I was always making mud pies. So you want that consistency. You want it to be kind of like a, I don't know, you don't want it soaking wet because it will run down your container. You want it wet enough that you can just mud pie consistency, okay? If you put too much water in it, you can add more mix. Um, just remember, you want to start out sparingly with your water. You don't want to do too much, okay? So I'm gonna show you how. Add a little bit of water first. Less than you think you will need. They're not ready, so we're gonna add more. It's still too crumbly to hold up on the side. Add a little more water. There, but not yet. Punch more. That is perfect. Okay, now for this next step, um, you are ready to go ahead and put your hypertufa into the mold. You need to have something for drainage or you can drill drainage, it's soft enough. Once it cures a little bit, you can drill them. Wine works work fantastic. I am using a rubber one. First thing you want to do, spray your mold with cooking spray or you can line it with plastic, either way. I'm gonna use, I like the smooth finish my um, bowl is going to have the texture of this. So I'm gonna spray it with cooking spray so I can get the cement out when it's ready. I'll start packing it in. I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. 
I'm gonna do some globs on the bottom. And you want it to be about an inch deep on the bottom. So basically you're just packing it in. Like that. Okay, once you get it how you want it in the bottom, you're going to poke a little hole like that. Put your cork in or your drainage, whatever. This does expand. Just going to continue to build up our sides. I want it to be pretty thick so that you have good structure. So I like to say an inch thick all the way around. And I am not gonna have enough which is okay. I'm going to mix some more. Okay, here I want you to take notice that I have mixed it up, but I have added way too much water. So as I start to pack it in, I notice after a minute, it starts to slide. So you'll see me hesitate and I pack in a little bit more, but then I realize, you know, I really, really want this to be done right. So I decide to take it all back out and add more of the dry mix and water to get it to the proper consistency. Don't be afraid to start over again if it's not how you want it to be. I also want to specify how important it is to use a sturdy container. As you're getting ready to see, I'm mixing this up and my white container crumbles. It just cracks and crumbles. You don't want this to happen. So be sure you have a very sturdy container as you're mixing. And now we are finally ready to begin again. I'm so much happier with these results. As you can see, they're sticking great. And so what I'm doing is I'm going around in a circular pattern and I am using one hand, my left hand to press against the outside as I push on the inside, packing it in to eliminate any air bubbles or any gaps that may be behind that I can't see. My goal is to have the thickness all the way around at an inch that is a lofty goal. So don't beat yourself up if you can't do that. You live and you learn once you do a couple of these. And you're just kind of punching lightly to get any air bubbles, any pockets, and you're feeling for any structural areas that are less and adding to it. Then as you start to move up, you're going to start working on the very top. You want to create a nice edge. You don't have to go to the very top of the container if you don't want to. Here I did, and I'm just really trying to make sure it's nice, even. And as I'm pushing, I'm just trying to finish off the upper rim, just making it nice and smooth and uniform. I had to come inside because it got a little loud outside. So the Hyper Tufa, as you can see, I've got it sitting on the pool table. It is in the mold. It is fairly uniform, but imperfect. It does not have to be exact. Uh, I like imperfect bowls, um, containers, and so I'm really, really excited about this one. I have my cork in place. If you see there is too much water, like pooling in the bottom, you can sprinkle some dry uh, mix on it and just pat it in and that will soak up some of the water. So the next step is to cover it in plastic. You want to not allow any air to be able to get to it and it is going to sit in a warm dry place for 24 to 48 hours. Step one is complete. We have created our Hyper Tufa, mixed it all together, had to keep making batches. I underestimated the size of this container. We got it all done and now it is going to sit for 48 hours. I've covered it in plastic. I'm gonna leave it in a warm, dry place where it is not exposed to freezing temperatures and I'm just gonna let it cure for 48 hours and then we will be back in a blink of an eye and we will see what it looks like. And then we have to go through the second phase of the curing process. And I'll go over that in just a minute with you, which for me will be in two days. All right, the day is finally here. We are going to unveil our Hyper Tufa and see how it turned out. But first I wanted to tell you just a couple of things to keep in mind. You can color the concrete. There are concrete stains. They do sell them with the concrete and you know, you can certainly add any color and also texturize the outside of your Hyper Tufa. You can add shells, you can add bubble wrap. Obviously you want to spray it so the bubble wrap comes off and you know, you just want to make it your own. That's the best thing about this is being able to be creative. You know, and again, remember these are irregular. They don't have to be perfect. The other thing, when we unveil it today, uh, we are going to obviously 
go through, this is the first curing process. Then we go through a second step, which is leaving it outside exposed to the elements. And we're going to allow mother nature to remove the alkalinity. We're gonna give it a little bit of help by rinsing it out with a hose, um, you know, just spraying the whole thing every single day. Now, I am in the middle of winter. This is more of a spring summer project, but you know what? I wanted to do it now and I'm going to see what happens moving it in and out. Normally what you do is put it in a shady spot under a tree two to three weeks. You know, you're just going to do the best that you can. Are you ready to take a look at our Hypertuba? I am so excited and fingers crossed that it does not crumble. Now, I've only waited 24 hours. Normally you wait 48 hours, but so I could get this video to you quicker. I'm pushing time. Let's go and take a look at what our Hypertufa looks like. Fingers crossed, everybody. Are you ready? Okay, let's do this. So the bag has a lot of condensation. Ah, I'm so nervous. I'm doing it on this little mini table so that I don't have to set everything back up. All right, it's hard, so, uh, is not coming out. <gasps> it came out. <gasps> Are y'all ready? Did you see that? It just came out. Oh, I was like, what am I supposed to do now? Are you ready? Oh, it is so nice. Wow. Okay, so my cork did not go all the way through. That's okay. Look at this, look at the detail of the outside. Okay. So do you see how there are these little holes? That is from perlite. It's a lot less when you use vermiculite, so I hear. Um, I've only ever used perlite, so what do you think? I am so excited. Okay, so this is where you pop your cork out. It's super lightweight. Now, all I have to do is use a drill and drill through this. You can put multiple drain holes in here and you don't have to use a cork. You can use, you know, you can just put your finger. Just want to make it something that you can get out. You can even drill the holes after you have made this. So like right now, it's still soft enough. You can tell that it's not cured 100%, but is this not beautiful? I love how it looks like an old planter. Can you imagine this with like a deep, green, purple, or even like a fern with moss. This is gorgeous. 24 hours. It's going to change color. It's going to turn white-ish. So now I go and I set it outside and I can go ahead and rinse it out. The other thing I want to tell you right now, you can take a higher brush and brush it. Smooth out some of these rough spots. Or if you want to expose some of the, you know, it not to be so smooth, you can go through and use a wire brush and it will make it less finished looking. It look a little bit more weathered, a lot more sort of like that. So anyway, what do you think? I'm so thrilled with this. I think it turned out fantastic. Okay, let's go rinse it out. The last step in creating our Hypertufa planter is to go ahead and rinse it out. Then we're going to let it cure for 10 to 14 days, rinsing it daily. I want to thank you so much for watching this video with me. I'm curious, have you ever heard of Hypertufa and are you willing to try it? I would love to hear from you and I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you are inspired to go out, get your hands dirty, and I will see you again soon. Take care.